Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're so glad that you're here. We have our littles that are going to be singing this morning, so let's uh, listen to them sing, and then we'll get on with the rest of our program. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. Uh, what a great day for us all to be in the house of the Lord, but then also to have so many great experiences today. And I'm so glad that you're here. A couple of things that I want to share with you as uh, we are kind of moving on through our day today. First of all, we have a digital connection card that you can scan on this next slide right there that if we can get the next slide up that would be awesome not yet close there we are uh, you can use this and you can scan and then you can let us know that you are in attendance today that would be greatly appreciated um, also if you are interested in giving today to uh, to the Ministry of Living Hope you can do so on that it will take you to a uh, our website as well and you can give online or uh, just a reminder for you that um, one of the things that happens at this time of year within uh, organizations is end of the year giving. If you are interested in making a donation at the end of the year for tax deduction reasons and purposes, you can certainly do that today and we or today all the way up to the end of the new year and just a great way for you to add to the ministry of Living Hope Wesleyan Church. As you know, Today is uh, the kids' Christmas program, and I can tell that they are really excited about what's going on, and you're in for a treat. So, what, oh, we're, uh, I'm talking to nobody right here except for you guys. Okay, I thought I heard my name over here. Um, anyways, kids' Christmas program, lots going on. Uh, but we also want to remind you that uh, it is Christmas sweater day. We don't normally uh, dress like this during the uh, Christmas year. At least I don't. Uh, I mean, every other day, but Sundays I typically do because uh, D- Disco Dinosaurs is awesome. But anyways, uh, so enjoy the sweaters. It's that time of year. The other thing that we have going on after service is the Christmas goodie extravaganza. And so uh, you may have brought in some goodies and some snacks. If you didn't, That's okay, stick around after service today because we got plenty of snacks that you can just enjoy and share and uh, you can get all sugared up before you go home and have an afternoon nap. Um, Other things that you need to know about because we have been doing a thing called the Christmas Outreach. This is where we've been um, getting gifts and we are going to give them to people in our community. Uh, Actually, a local elementary school, Nixon Elementary, and some families that we're going to bless at this time of year. And uh, if you brought in those gifts today, awesome. Thank you so very much. If you bought something and you thought, you know what, I forgot it today, that happens. Tuesday is the last day that you can bring it in because we're wrapping presents on uh, Tuesday night at six o'clock. We're going to eat some soup and have some fun and then wrap presents. And we're going to give them to the families on Wednesday, and so um, that's a, a great opportunity for us. A couple of things that you can do. If you want to uh, make some final purchases, we still have some stuff available on uh, our Facebook page. You can go to uh, Sign Up Genius, and there are some things that are still available. Also, if you want to help out with a soup supper on Tuesday, there's still some sign-up spots available, or you can uh, look out the window of the kitchen. There's a sign-up sheet, and you can sign up right there. Two other things that I want to tell you about, actually three. First one is this. 
is that uh, Christmas Eve worship service is going to be on uh, Christmas Eve, December 24th at 5 p.m., and it is going to be communion and candle lighting, and I just think that you don't want to miss this night. Not only is it just a great night to worship, it's just the, a great night for reminders of why we are celebrating Christmas, and I hope that you're here. We're also doing church on Christmas Day at 10 a.m., and so we would love it if you would join us for that as well. Um, and just a reminder, uh, for today and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we don't have a staffed nursery, but if, you're, if you need to use the nursery, you can do so. That's not a problem today. Um, just don't leave your child in there because there's no adults in there, okay? No, just don't do that. Um, the other thing is, is on New Year's Eve day, we are going to have an opportunity for you, if you would like to, to come to the church and pray in the new year. From 4.30 until 6 on New Year's Eve day, the sanctuary and the church will be open, and we would invite you to come into the sanctuary and just have some quiet time before the Lord and just pray in the new year. We've never done that before at least in my time here as your pastor. But I think that this year, we need to begin our year in prayer. Let's make it a purpose and a point to do that. And if you would like specific prayer, I will be here. And maybe even some of our board members, if they are available, will be here as well to pray for you. And just a great way for us to bring in the new year. So that's at 4.30 to 6 on New Year's Eve day. Well, I'm going to be done talking so that we can get on with the festivities of today. So let's welcome our kids program today with a little bit of applause. Let's get them started with that, all right? Ah, Christmas, a time of love and joy, a time of peace and goodwill, a time for decorating and baking, and realizing you don't have the time to decorate or bake. A time of driving to the mall you didn't realize was still open and not being able to find a parking space. A time of getting the last copy of some video game before the other shoppers do, and it's a time for family. Many of us will be hitting the road this Christmas, going home for the holidays, in order to see family and friends we haven't seen in some time. Spending a little holiday cheer with those we love, if we still have any to spare. The Anderson family is about to start their long journey to Grandpa's house. This trip will prove to be a road trip they won't ever forget, one that reminds them of what Christmas is really all about. Let's check on the Andersons as they get ready to hit the road. Well, that's the last of the bags. We're going to be gone for three days, but we have enough clothes and supplies for a month. You never know what it's going to be like out there, or in your dad's house for that matter. What does that mean? He goes a little crazy with the thermostat. Last time we went to Grandpa's, it was so cold in my room, I had to wear my parka. The time before that, it was so hot, I used a tub of ice cream for a pillow. No more complaining, everyone. Why do we have to go to Grandpa's at all? It's Christmas. That's why we are going to see Grandpa. It's Christmas. But what about all those presents under the tree? We're going to have to wait till after Christmas to open them. No, I packed all of the presents so we can open them at Grandpa's house. What about the singing? The youth group is going Christmas caroling through the neighborhood tonight, and I'm going to miss it. There's a Christmas Eve service at your grandfather's church. You'll have plenty of chances to sing. What about mom's green cookies shaped like Christmas trees? We can't have Christmas without those. Of course I bake. Of, cor <laughs> of course I bake Christmas tree cookies and left them on the counter. Turn around. We have to go back for the Christmas tree cookies. Listen to you all. Christmas isn't about gifts or songs or cookies. Christmas is about family. I thought Christmas was about Jesus. Of course. You of course. You're right, Alicia. 
Christmas is all about Jesus. And when Jesus left heaven and came to earth, God made sure that he had a family. We all need people in our lives to love us and care for us. We all need to belong and know that we are not alone in this world. So God gave us the gift of family. You're right, Dad. I'm glad I have you, Mom, and even Alicia. I love you too, Kylie. And now that Grandpa lives all alone in that big house, he needs to know that he still has a family that loves him, that he still belongs. That's really sweet, you two. I'm proud of you both. This is shaping up to be the great, to be the start of a great road trip. Where are you going? This isn't the way you usually take to get there. I'm headed back home first. Grandpa will kill me if we show up for Christmas without your Christmas tree cookies. The Christmas road trip is nothing new. It started long ago. The first Christmas travelers came from very far away, all the way from heaven, to deliver some good news. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angels went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth <laughs> You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, and he will be great and will be will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One is to be the Holy. So the Holy One is to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Luke, Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. This is, how, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus woke up, he did... <laughs> When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Matthew 1, 18, 25. Congregation, would you sing with us as the last one, please? There's one from Kansas I just need to find Hawaii, Alaska, and Vermont, and I'll win license plate bingo. That's great, Mom. Hooray. 
You two are way behind. It's almost like you're not even trying to win. Dear, I don't think they are. Okay. Clearly, you guys are bored with Fly and Play Bingo. We could sing Christmas songs. Uh. How much longer till we get there? No, Kylie, don't ask that again. We will get Can I at least have your tablet to play Mommy Zombie 7? I didn't bring it. Remember, we said no tablets to Stroger. When we're with Grandpa, we want to make sure he gets our full attention. That's fine when we're with Grandpa, but now it's just, there's just... You people. How on earth can you two be bored? Just look at all the wonderful sights we're encountering on this journey. What sights? Why? Right over there. There's a, there's a ferocious mountain lion. That's a cat in someone's yard. And two minutes ago, we drove right over the mighty Amazon River. You mean that bridge that ran over that little creek? And up ahead, I can see the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is in Paris, dear. What do you call that, then? A weird-looking tree. Ah, uh, forget it. The Christmas tradition of sightseeing is totally lost on all. Since, since when is sightseeing a Christmas tradition? Since the first Christmas. What? An angel appeared to an angel appeared to shepherds followed by a whole company of heavenly hosts. That must have been quite a sight. Sure. And then when the shepherds went into Bethlehem, they saw the greatest sight of all. Jesus. That's right. Jesus' gift, Jesus was God's gift to us. God loves us, and he sent his son to us so that one day Jesus could save us from our sins. That must have been quite a sight for the shepherds to see the Savior of the world as a little baby. Sometimes it's good to just sit back and enjoy the sights. I see. We're driving up to the Grand Canyon right now. What Grand Canyon? <laughs> Paul. What sights are you seeing this Christmas? Or better still, who do you have your sights set on? Now Mary and Joseph start out on their own road trip. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and, and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she, gave birth to her, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. There is still more traveling to be done for our angel friends. They've been really busy lately. They will be joined by a group of shepherds who only have to drive down the road to get to their destination. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in claws, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone up into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who is lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Luke 2, 8 to 20. first thing I'm going to do when I get to Grandpa's house is give him a big hug and say I've missed you and I love you. The first thing I'm going to do is, is kneel down and kiss the solid ground and say I've missed you and I love you. We haven't been in the car that long. We won't be too much longer now. It's, we just take this next right onto Highway 17 and then it's a straight shot the rest of the way. We do not take the next right. That's what the GPS says. I've been to my dad's house a million times. I think I know how to get there. And there goes our turn. That is not our turn. We have three more miles on this road, and then we turn left. Not right, left. I think the lady who lives in the GPS knows better than you do, Dad. There is no lady living in the GPS. It's just a computer voice. Her voice sounds too natural. She can't be a computer. She is. I mean, it is a computer. And the computer says we need to make the next available U-turn. Shut that thing off. I know the way to go. Dad, can I ask you a question? Is it about the GPS? No. Then go ahead. Why don't you have to do the things you tell me I have to do? What on earth are you talking about, Kylie? A couple weeks ago, I was complaining about my soccer coach. I didn't like the place he was calling. Do you remember what you said to me? No. I do. You told Kylie that when someone knows more than us, we should follow them. Let them show us the way. Doesn't sound like me. <laughs> yes, it does. Why do I have to follow Coach Benson and you don't have to follow? I get it. I get it. This reminds me of the star. What? <laughs> oh. Okay. A s the Christmas star. The Magi understood that God had placed this, that star in the sky, and so they followed it. God, through the star, led them straight to Jesus. We don't always know the way to go, but we can follow God and trust that he, that he'll, will, sh that he will show us the way. That's really nice, Mom. Thank you, sweetie. Huh? What's wrong, Dad? Nothing. It's just, where's the Taco Bell? There should be a Taco Bell right over there, right before the turn. Make the next available U-turn. Now you tell me. We are now joined by more travelers on this Christmas road trip. Men who have come from very far away, magi or wise men from the east. They come bearing gift to give to God's gift to us, Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the, during the time of King Hagrid, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is, the one, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disrupted, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the Messiah was to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea. They replied, for this is what the prophet has written. 
But you, Bethlehem, the land of Judea, are no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so I may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star had seen what it rose and ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When the child, when the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Matthew two one through eleven. <laughs> There's a gas station. I said no. We had to stick with the plan. Come on, Dad. I'm dying back here. We stopped for a bathroom break 30 minutes ago. She didn't have to go then. It's only one more hour until we reach Grandpa's house. <laughs> I'll never make it. Dear, she looks like she's about to burst. We really need to stop. This was not part of the plan. The plan was to stop at 12.15 for lunch, which we did, then to hit the road again at 12.55, which we did, then a restroom break sometime between 2 and 2.03, which, which we did. Uh. Okay, okay. But hurry. I hate when things don't go to plan. When do they ever? Most of the time. Yeah, right. I don't think so, dear. What about your plan to lose 10 pounds this year, Dad? I'm almost there. Just 15 pounds to go. <laughs> or, when we plan to, or when you plan to build the bookcase for Kylie's room and the whole thing fell apart? Kylie doesn't read very much anyway. Remember when we planned to buy that house on Sycamore, but someone else got it? The house we have is, is much better than that one anyway. I agree, but that wasn't a part of the plan. Much better. Thanks, Dad. So, you're saying that things just never happen the way they're planned? Sure they do. <laughs> Kylie, we were just telling your dad that his plans don't usually work out the way he intended. No, but God's plans never fail. You're right about that. It was God's plan to show us his love and make a way to save us from our sin. That's right. And God has a plan for each one of us, and nothing can stop his plan. I think God has a different plan than us getting to Grandpa's house in the next hour. Why do you say that? We just got a flat tire. Our Christmas road trip has been a happy one. We've met the Savior of the world, God, Jesus, God's own son. But tragedy is just around the corner. We must hit the road again, this time to save a child's life. Others won't be so fortunate. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. There... Uh, stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child with his mother uh, during the night, and left for Egypt, the, uh, where he stayed until the death of Herod. 
And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its, and its vicinity who were two years old and under. In accordance with the time uh, he had learned from the Magi, um, then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Archelaus was reigned in Judea for, of his uh, father place Herod. Wait. Oh, sorry. In place of his father Herod, he, got, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew from the district of Galilee. He went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So it was fulfilled through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Uh, Matthew two twelve through 23. Jesus, he made the ultimate road trip leaving his place in heaven to come to earth. He left his place as God the Son to become a baby, the son of Mary and Joseph. His trip, his trip would continue as he grew into a man, as he perched about God's kingdom, as he healed and performed miracles, as he went to a cross for us, as he died for our sins, as he was placed in a tomb, and as he rose again from that tomb to life again. What a journey. How will you be hitting the road this Christmas? Wherever you travel to this Christmas, whether it's across the country to see family, across town to see the lights, or across the living room to grab another present from under the tree, we invite you to take that trip with Jesus. He wants to hit the road with you. He wants to be your savior, to shine his light brightly in your heart, not just at Christmas, but every day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 1 through 14.
Well done, kids and teenagers. Good job. Well done. And uh, let's give thanks to our leaders that helped us out this year. If you leaders want to stand up and so we can uh, greet you properly and thank you. Thank you very much. Jenna, you were helping out too. There you go. Let's give applause for Jenna too. Very good. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. Kids, you did a fantastic job. And thank you for telling us the Christmas story in a fun and delightful way. That was amazing. A couple of things as we close out our time together. Just a reminder, Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock right here at Living Hope. And then Christmas Day, uh, 10 a.m. service. And then don't forget this Tuesday night is our outreach wrapping party. And I know I say it almost every year. We're not like rapping musically. We're rapping presents, okay? Don't forget that. If you're expecting to come to rap, you can, but we're rapping presents. Um, just a great day for us. And then also, uh, as soon as I pray and dismiss, we're going to allow you to go ahead and go get some snacks and uh, just spend some time with one another. That's what the rest of today looks like. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming and for being here. And uh, those of you that joined us online, we know that, that you're there, and we're glad that you're here with us as well. We look forward to worshiping with you on Christmas Eve. You don't want to miss it. Let's pray together. Father God, we are so blessed that we got to experience uh, your Christmas story, the story of Jesus, the best Christmas story. And so we thank you that we got to experience that today through the, the work of kids and teenagers. And what a joy it is. Lord, we are so amazed at your grace, your mercy, and we thank you that you sent your son to be the greatest gift. You sent your son to be God with us, Emmanuel. And we thank you for that. We love you and we give you praise. And we pray all these things in your son's glorious name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. Why don't you can go ahead and start getting snacks.